anyway, um, when I, I really felt like the Lord really wanted me to, um, to elaborate on, on her word that she gave us. And she, um, you know, gave us the word about prayer, which is up there. And, and it says here, I've called you and Peter to be awakeners. Now, she was releasing that word in the church, but we're all called to be awakeners, okay? So even though she's saying it to me and Peter, this is for all of us. The Lord says that New Jersey will be one of those states that will be one of those states most mobilized to pray and stand. And I'm calling you to sound the alarm, to mobilize an army to go forth, to wake people up. All right? So that, that's the word. And so Holy Spirit is speaking to all of us because he wants us, and that's, that's my portion, the Holy Spirit, you know, of intercession and prayer. He's our teacher, and he's wanting us to go beyond our limitations. And, um, you know, so one of the things that I really felt impressed that the Lord was saying to, to just really reiterate about us being a priesthood before the Lord. We're all called to minister to God, right? But God has called us all to be powerhouses for him. And I have to kick it up a notch, as you do. We all do, because that's what he's asking us to do in this hour. He's saying, wake up. We all have to wake up. And I'm going to talk a little bit about what could be hindering us from being the awakeners, being the, the, the militant army. The Lord spoke to me in July and said, I want you to raise up and mobilize a, a prayer army, militant prayer army. Well, what does that look like? I'm like, Lord. <laughs> That's nice to hear that, but what does that mean to me, you know? And so God is, first of all, we all have to individually catch the vision. And then others in other churches, you know, I know God's speaking to other churches. I'm not the only one he's speaking to. But we're the remnant that God has called to make the change. We're the ecclesia. And, and that means we're called out ones. We're called to legislate and make a difference in our region, in our cities, in our families, in our lives, in, this, in, our, in our state, in our country, for heaven's sakes. So um, in Revelations 1.6, in the Amplified, it says, and formed us, God has formed us into a kingdom as his subjects, priests to his God and Father, and to him be the glory and the power and the majesty and dominion forever and ever. And so, but it also says, I, I should have put, I think it was in verse 5, that we're kings and priests. See, we, we minister unto the Lord first, but we're priests, kings where we legislate and we have dominion. We have rule and we have authority, and you'll see that. And so then in, in 1 Peter 2, 5, and I know you're aware of all this, but it's good to rehearse it. It says, come and like living stones, be yourselves built into a spiritual house. So we have to build ourselves into this for a holy, dedicated, consecrated priesthood to offer up those spiritual sacrifices that are acceptable and pleasing to God through Jesus Christ. See, that's, that, it's a training ground. We've all gone from faith to faith. We're all developing our, our spiritual muscles and our prayer power. But um, he, he's, he's challenging us today to go beyond, all right? In 1 Peter 2.9, it says, but we are a chosen race. We're chosen. He's calling us a royal priesthood, a dedicated nation, God's own purchase, special people, that we may set forth the wonderful deeds and display the virtues and perfections of him who called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. I shared last week, or I don't know when I shared, I shared a while ago, when that there's a Nigerian um, man by the name of James Kawala, K-A-W-L-A-Y-A, -A -A, something like that. And he spoke about the power of prayer. But before I do that, could Renee and Ron just stand up, and we're going to just put our hands out towards them. They have a mission. They're going on a mission to, I believe, in Alabama to minister to a group of, of um business people. So, Lord, we just bless them. And, Father, we just thank you, Father, for the wisdom. We thank you for uh, your unction that's upon their lives. We thank you for words of knowledge. We thank you, Father, for the evangelistic anointing upon them. Father, as they go to meet with these business people in Alabama, and, Father, that they will speak a word in season, we ask that you already prepare those people's hearts. We say, let there be revival in that business meeting. Holy Spirit, let your oil flow. And we decree signs, wonders, and miracles, Father. And we set a bloodline around them that your angels go before them and are a rear guard in in Jesus' name, amen, and we bless them. Amen. So 
God has called us all to pray, but in 1 Samuel 12, 23, it says, As for me, far be it from me that I should sin against the Lord by failing to pray for you. Prayerlessness is a sin, and it's a, it's a sin even against our own spiritual life, right? And how do we develop a close walk with Jesus if we don't pray? We, we don't know, like, we're, you know, it's, it's a disadvantage if we're not praying, we're not hearing his voice, we're not feeling his comfort, we're not experiencing the peace of God. If we're not praying, we're not experiencing his joy. We're not experiencing breakthrough. See, prayer is for all of us. And I know I've heard a lot of people say, well, God, I, you know, I don't hear God's voice. If you're his sheep, he says, my sheep hear my voice. We all hear his voice. But we just have to fine tune it. And what we have to do is develop that time and take time with him. The beauty of God is, is that he simplifies everything. And, you know, yes, it's good to learn about prayer. It's good to study about prayer. It's good to research. It's easy. We have the Internet. But if you just call out to him and say, Lord, teach me. God, give me. You have to know the word, though. Because you need to know what's right and what's wrong. You need to know. Because remember, the devil comes as an angel of light. All right. So in Hebrews 4.16, in the Amplified, it says, Therefore, let us with privilege. I love this. With privilege. Approach the throne room of grace, that is the throne of God's gracious favor, with confidence. We go before that throne with confidence, knowing that God's listening, right? And without fear, so that we will receive mercies, hallelujah, for our failures, hallelujah, and find his amazing grace to help us in time of need, an appropriate blessing coming just and at the right time. We can go before that throne room of grace because of the blood of Jesus Christ, because of what he did on the cross for us. All right? So, oh, so let me get back to this guy, James. For those of you who haven't heard it, James uh, was a warlock, top warlock in Nigeria, and, and he was dedicated at his birth to, you know, work in the, in the realms of darkness. And so... Um, when Mara Cerullo, who was, he, this guy passed away, and by the way, grew up in Patterson, just saying, and he went to a, um, an orphanage in, in Clifton, um, he, this guy was amazing. If you can read any of his stuff, it's so good. I, I just love the, 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 the anointing on his life comes through even in his literature. But he came to Kampala and to minister and, and this guy said that all, he had to tell all the witches and warlocks that they had to leave that region in a 70-mile sphere, he said, because of the power of God on Morris's life. Well, no different than Morris. Yeah, that's prayer power. And they couldn't go back into the region for 21 days because of the power of prayer. All right? So why do you think the enemy hinders most of us with praying? Because it knows it. He knows that we kick, and I'm sorry for this, I grew up in city, we kick his sorry butt in plain English. That's what happens in prayer, all right? So, Kathy Platt, I don't know if you remember, you gave me a book by, um, what's his name, Wesley Duell, whatever, and Revival Fires, right? And his quote in his book says, victory depends on the warrior spirit. You cannot be God's person with anything less than the militant spirit of prayer. We are called to be the militant ones. God says that, you know, we are to fight the good fight of faith. You say, yeah, but Jesus, he's a lover. Yeah, he's a lover, but he's a warrior. And when you love, you speak the truth in love because we want to see the things that are upside down turn right side up, right? And so he says that in 1 John 3, for this purpose, the Son of Man was manifested to destroy the works of the devil. I also typed it out in the um, Passion. But the one who indulges in a sinful life of the devil, because the devil has been sinning from the beginning, the reason the Son of God was revealed was to undo and destroy the works of the devil. So Jesus came to destroy the works of the enemy and to equip us. We're at war, and we can't win the war for our personal lives, for our families, for our health, if we're not in that place of prayer. Now, Leah said it's not out of striving, but it's out of relationship with him. It's out of us knowing. Listen, she, she, she had that dream, but that girl is play, praying and decreeing the word, listening to worship day and night, has, has a you know, teaching of faith day and night. We have to nourish ourselves, and whatever works for you is how you do it. 
But we need to nourish ourselves and know that we serve a God who is the great I am, who's the beginning and the end, who's the alpha and the omega, who's our healer, who's our deliverer. He's our shalom. He's our righteousness. Listen, he said, he's like, listen, I'm with you. I'm on your side. I'm working with you for your breakthrough. But don't give up because there's a prevailing prayer. There's praying because there's times, you know, you get something quick. Then there's other times we are worrying. We're We've been praying for land for 20 some odd years. But we learned through it. We learned our authority. In your dream, you spoke about the police. You saw the police. That's her authority was get out of here in Jesus' name. And we have that right to push the enemy back, but you have to know your authority, but also have that relationship where you're hearing God's voice. It's not me just following seven steps. It's me hearing a strategy from God. That's the privilege of us going before the throne room of grace boldly, waiting on him, sitting there. We have to be quiet. We talk too much sometimes. Just be quiet and sit and hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. And like I always say, for those of you who don't know Popeye, but when I was a wee child, it was an old cartoon, but Popeye the sailor man would eat his spinach and, and his muscles would grow and grow and grow. But that's us spending time in the Lord and it's it's like we're getting that nutrients, that nourishment, and we're getting all pumped up. You can go when you're feeling all kinds of icky and weak. We all experience that. Right? We start out like, oh, Lord. You know, and that's the enemy. He wants to distract us. We're feeling like, oh, you know, we don't really want to get into it. And then you start, and you start praying. I, I, I remember thinking, I don't know how to pray. How the heck am I going to pray? Because at the time, we didn't have internet. And like, what do you have to bring an orchestra in your house? You have worship? Like, how do you do this stuff? I'm telling you, I was a little dense there. I didn't know. You know, you take things so literal, right? And um, there's a book by Dick Eastman. I've shared this before. And he said, and he broke it down into five-minute intervals, which really helped me. Five minutes of praise. And, he, and so someone spoke to me and told me about, I said, I don't know how to praise. And they said, open up to the Psalms. And, of course, I got my Amplified Bible so I can have more words. Open up to the Psalms and just, ca you know, capture some of them and sing them back to the Lord. Amen. I'm telling you, I I'm doing that every day for five, you know, it was ten days. I went somewhere in the Lord. I don't, you know, like Paul says, I don't know if I was in heaven, not in heaven. I don't know where I was. I mean, the Spirit of the Lord took me someplace. But five minutes of intercession, five minutes of praying in the Spirit. But then it developed from there, you know. So, and the beauty of it is we have Holy Spirit that's in us. It's teaching us, right? So prayers will penetrate darkness, every demonic assignment. And you will learn how to bind the principalities and powers. You will learn how to push him back. You will learn that above all that you have the spirit of God that's in you and greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. Not backing down. You're not having my portion. You're not experiencing. You're not going to take my inheritance. When um, on um, Thursday, Debbie Tag came up. Debbie, are you here? Oh, we'll pray for her. But Debbie's not here. I'm only kidding. She's probably watching online. Debbie shared a testimony, and, and that particular Sunday, it was just intense during worship, and, you know, the Lord gave me a word for her and said, and we're going to talk about a python spirit today that hinders our prayer life. And this spirit of python, I saw a coil wrapped around her. And I said to her, the Lord's going to break this thing off of you. This, we're going to pray, take authority of this spirit of python. And I said to her, and, but the Lord spoke to me and said, he's going to give you an inheritance. Well, so there was more to it. So what had happened was her boss that day was talking about um, his wife. They, they wanted to gift her a condominium, her inheritance. She said, I have no inheritance for my son. And there were a series of other wonderful testimonies of monies that came in, but it wasn't until we broke off that spirit that a python that hinders our finances, it hinders our prayer life, and, and things turned around. She has a condominium that's hers. Her stove didn't work for 10 years. That week, her stove started working. Her son got a raise, and she got a very large gift, a bonus that following week. That was all from taking authority over this spirit, but it comes from revelation. And that hearing the voice of the Lord and saying, this is what's going on here. That's for all of us. 
The enemy hates marriages. He hates family life. He ha everything that is, is something that God wants us to have in restoration, the enemy comes against and lies to you and says there's no hope. Lies to you and says there's no way out. There's a way out, and it comes through us spending time with the Lord and getting revelation and then being with a community of people that know how to pray and plow and break, th you know, break things through. So... We have been seated in Ephesians 2, 6. We're raised up with Christ, and we're seated in heavenly places. So, so we share his rule. If we're seated in heavenly places, right? So we got to fight the good fight of faith. So Holy Spirit has anointed our mouths. We have the fire of God in us. But if we don't fan the flame, somebody was saying that, we got to stir it up. We have to, oh, I know, Lynn, you were saying, we have to stir it up. It doesn't just happen. So the Lord said to me today, challenge everyone, including me, are you willing to go beyond? Are you willing to allow Holy Spirit to bring you into a whole other place spiritually in a different dimension, in a deeper dimension, in knowing his voice precisely with a clarion call? Are, you know, and, and listen to this. Now, I know you know this scripture. I think I sent it to Peter. In 2 Corinthians 10... Two through five in the Passion. Listen to how Paul wrote it. Now I plead with you that when I come, don't force me <laughs> to take a hard line with you. The spirit of slap over there. He said, which I'm willing to do by daring to confront those who mistakenly believe that we are living by the standards of the world, not by the spirit's wisdom and power. All right. For although we live in a natural realm, we don't wage a military campaign employing human weapons using manipulation to achieve our aim. Instead, our spiritual weapons are energized with divine power to effectively dismantle the defenses behind which people hide. We can demolish, listen, every deceptive fantasy that opposes God and break through every arrogant attitude that is raised up in defiance of the true knowledge of God. We capture like prisoners of war every thought and insist that it bow in obedience to the anointed ones. Since we are armed with such a dynamic weaponry, we stand ready to punish any trace of rebellion as soon as you choose to completely obey him. All right? So we're not to fear him. Wesley also wrote this. Don't tremble before Satan. Challenge his authority. Leah, you challenge his authority in that dream. Don't cower when he roars like a lion. Remember, the Bible says he is as a roaring lion. He's not a lion. Take authority in Jesus' name, and the old lion will slink away with its tails between his legs. <laughs> so we have to commit, we have to equip ourselves, all right? And so the enemy's objective always is to pervert justice, overthrow government. You know, look at the craziness that's in the world, the woke mentality, and the, uh, you know, just establishing, look at the anti-Semitic spirit that's out there. Look at all the fighting and the violence, the immoral leaders, right? We have that authority to pray. And God has a plan. Listen, we're not defeated. And so, but if you look at it from that perspective, from a worldly perspective, like, you know, we're up a creek without a paddle, you know, that's, that's not where we're at. The enemy is defeated by our prayer. Now, what can hinder us? Who can abide? Now, in Psalm 15, is that not working up there? Um, Psalm 15, 1 through 4, in the New King James Version. All right. My Lord, we just thank you that the word's still coming forth. Yeah. Right? Lord, who may abide in your tabernacle? Who might dwell in your holy hill? He who walks uprightly and works righteousness and speaks, here's, this is the key piece that I want, and speaks the truth in his heart. Speaks the truth, is honest. Stop blaming everybody and your mother for your issues. Speaks the truth in your heart who does not backbite with, backbite with his tongue, nor does evil to his neighbor, nor does he take up a reproach against his friend. We have got to be honest. We have got to say, Lord, here's my issue. Lord, show me my heart. I can't. Listen, people are going to offend you. People are going to hurt your heart. Just life. And you say, oh, but it's in the church. It's in any place that you're at. If you're around human beings, you're going to get aggravated with people, right? So 
whether you're in the workplace, whether you're in the church, you know, and I get it. Your expectation is, well, we're in a church. We should know better. We all should know better. But why do we then want to blame someone else, but we don't look at our own stuff? You know, we can point our finger, but we got three of our own back and, you know, pointing back at us. You want mercy, but you don't sir, so show mercy. You have bitterness in your heart, but that's okay. But if someone's bitter towards you, you're all bent out of shape. See, we have to look at what's going on in our heart. Now, there are times, you know, that we have to confront. That doesn't mean you're combative. It just means speak the truth in your heart. Lisa's going to teach on that. And feedback is your friend. I used to hate that. Like, oh, I'm afraid to hear what they have to say. But feedback is our friend, right? But we have to be and say, Lord, I don't want my prayer life hindered. I have to choose to forgive people. I have to choose. Listen, offense is the major, major area. I was just listening. Did, did anybody ever hear of a, a girl? She's uh, Colombian, I think. She's from, her name is Julia Lopez. Now, she's, you can check her out online. She was in the occult. And um, her family was in Santeria. And she said, one of the main ways the enemy keeps you in bondage, hinders your finances, hinders your relationship, is through offense. That is one of the main ways with Christians. Where are we all going to go out and smoke a joint? I mean, come on. I mean, you know, we're going to church forever. <laughs> you know, we're serving Jesus, right? Like, how is he going to get us? So, yeah, let's, let's, let's get offended. Let's hold bitterness in our heart. Let's judge them. Well, they didn't do this to me. Well, guess what? Neither did you at times, right? Like, we just have to get real already. I mean, we're going to keep these walls up and have bitterness coming out of our heart and, and mumbling and murmuring and complaining. And come on, it's hindering you. It's hindering me. And we all have our judgments at times. I mean, we all do, but we, have, we repent. Agree with your adversary quickly. It's like, oh, Lord, I know that wasn't right. Let me repent. But show mercy. The Bible says mercy triumphs over judgment. You want mercy? Then sow it. Amen. And it doesn't mean you're just letting people off the hook. It just means you're going to act more like Jesus. And when the time comes, you know, you can confront. But listen, there was somebody very, very, very dear to me that hurt my heart terribly. And I was really hurt and, and angry over the situation. And I said to the Lord, I'm, I'm sorry. Until this person says they're sorry, you know. I'm just really, I'm closing my heart off. And the Lord said, you're going you're gonna to have a problem here. He said, because my ways aren't your ways. And he said, and you have to choose to forgive and cut your losses and move on. He said, and I'll work on that person. But you're going to have to choose to forgive. And because I said, I want to hear this individual say, I am sorry. And he said, well, you're not going to hear it right away. And so he said, and until you shift. And when I started to shift my heart towards this person, um, this person started acting so much nicer. It was a family member. And, um, I am and, sorry. And it wasn't him. <laughs> it wasn't my husband. I'm just saying, because I will let you know if it was. <laughs> and, you know, when family members, you know, it's hard. And I thought, Lord, I was just so angry. And every time, you know, you get that knot in your stomach, like, mm, you know, I don't think she's going to love it. And so... Um, you know, then you know, and that's where the sarcasm comes out. That's where the bitterness comes out, right? And the Lord said to me, stop it. He said, because your way in your natural mind, remember the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, mighty through God through the pulling down a stronghold. He says, your way is not working. You have to let me soften this person's heart and recognize, let them, they're ashamed, let them humble themselves, right? He said, it's not going to be in your time frame, so let it go. Let it go. That's my word to you. Let it go for heaven's sakes. And I did. And you know what? Now the relationship has been so amazing. And, you know, I still want to hear. I'm sorry. Don't get me wrong. But, but, but I let it go. And now we're nice to each other. So, um, but listen to this. In the book of James, it says in chapter 5, verses 14 through 16, it says here, um, are there any sick among you? Then ask the elders of the church to come and pray over the sick and anoint them with oil in the name of our Lord. And the prayer of faith will heal the sick and the Lord will raise them up. If they've committed sins, they will be forgiven. So, but um, I really wanted to, this verse, verse, yeah, the verse before that. But anyway, you have to repent first, all right? And so, but you have to, but, you know, again, sometimes, and honestly, honestly, hear what I'm saying. 
just because you're sick, I'm not saying that you have all in your heart, but if there is something that's there that could be hindering healing in any dimension, ask Holy Spirit to uproot it, to show you. How many times have we ministered to people that got healing that hadn't thought of something that happened a gazillion years ago and the Lord brings it up I'm like, holy mackerel, I totally forgot about that. But that was something that has caused such judgment and such anger in hearts, right? We all have had that. I mean, none of us have lived a perfect life. But it's like the enemy will put, you know, things in your, ma in your mind and think it's because of that person. Uh-uh. It is not. Let's check. Why are you so sensitive? Why are you getting so angry and so hurt? Then that means there's something here. Check it out and find out why are you so sensitive about an issue? Why are you getting so offended, so hurt? Now, again, you know, I get there's a fine balance, but if that's your go-to and you automatically are cutting people off and, you know, this isn't working and, you know, I'm offended. This one didn't say hello to me and I'm offended. We've all been there. But then you have to mature and grow up. That's where we wake up. In Luke 10, 19, it says, listen carefully. I have given you authority that you now possess. Listen, you have it. But he doesn't want you to know it. You have it. To tread on serpents and scorpions and the ability to exercise authority over all the power of the enemy, Satan, and nothing in any way will harm you. He's given us great authority. Matthew 16, 18 through 19, I'm getting to the python. Jesus came back and said, God bless you, Simon, son of jo uh, Jonah. It's in the message. You didn't get that answer out of books or from teachers. My father in heaven, God himself, let you in on a secret of who I really am. And now I'm going to tell you who you really are, Peter. You are a rock. This is the rock on which I put together my church, a church so expansive with energy that not even the gates of hell will be able to keep it out. No matter what the world's trying to do, no matter what the government's trying to do, the church will remain. We're, and by the way, we're the church, just saying. And that's not all. You have complete and free access to God's kingdom, keys to any and every door, no more barriers between heaven and earth and earth on, and heaven. A, a yes on earth is a yes in heaven, right? That's where I bind. And a, and a new on earth, um, a no on earth is a no in heaven, you know, binding and loosing. Now, we were in Israel, and one of the things that, uh, one of the places we went to was where Pan, we were in Caesarea Philippi, and one of the things about, when you, when you hear about gates and city, it's a, def a city's defense, right? And so, when we talk about, like, even where we possess the gates of our enemy, it means to conquer. It means to conquer our enemy. And so, you know, he said the gates of hell will not prevail. He's, he's, we're on the offensive. We're not on the defensive. He's called us to overthrow the works of the enemy, right? I know, I'm hot. I know you're hot. The fire of God's just coming out, right? Is that what it is? I know, I'm hot too. So, <laughs> no, no, it's the fire of God. When the gates of the city <laughs> were breached, the attacking army won, right? So that's who we are. We are the ecclesia. We're that legislative body. But now the beauty of it is what I loved about where Jesus had them, all the disciples go, we've been there. And it's where they worship the God of Pan, all right? And it was, in, so this is what it said in, in the um, commentary. It says the, that um, the church would be built on the rock of Caesarea Philippi, where and it was filled with Pagan idols where ungodly beliefs and values dominated, and, and that's where we crush that. It says here that the Canaanites worshipped this god. It was deeply occultic and superstitious, described Mount Hermon as the realm of the dead. It was a place where deep idol worship of orgies, of strange occult rituals, and even human sacrifice. That city was built on that rock formation, and it was nestled up against a cliff known as the Rock of the Gods. And many shrines were carved into that mountainside. And they actually believed it was a gateway to the place of the dead, and, they, and that's where they practiced human sacrifice. And, it's a, and so I want you to understand that it was a regional cap, capital for idolatry and false religion, witchcraft and paganism. And so Jesus said, the gates of hell will not prevail against the church. He intentionally 
was there. He knew all the nonsense that's going on with all the occultism, Satanism, wokeism, he, you know, cancel culture. He knew all that. He said the gates of hell will not prevail against the ecclesia, against the church, against the called out ones, the ones who know who they are in Christ, the ones who know the name of Jesus and know our authority, the ones who are in intimate relationship that will call those things as being not as though they are. Push back the enemy. That's who we are. That's who God says. And he says here in Matthew 18, in 18, it says, I assure you, most solemnly say to you, whatever you bind, whatever you forbid, declare to be improper and unlawful on earth, shall have already been bound in heaven. And whatever you loose, whatever you permit, see, we have that authority, declare lawful on earth, shall already have been loosed in heaven. And so we have to confess and, and acknowledge, you know, that, that Lord God, we are these people and the enemy's trying to shut our mouths. He's trying to say, your prayers don't make a difference. Why bother? Oh, it's so boring to pray. How many have ever felt that without a show of hands? It's so boring to pray. Oh my God. It's like pulling teeth. That's because he wants that because he knows it destroys him. He knows we get revelation. He knows the power of God is in us. We have the DNA of Christ Jesus in us. Remember, Papa eating his spinach. You know, you got, you're all buff. You got a six pack when you're in the presence of the Lord. That's who we are. And then we have the angels that he sends around us. You know, the angels of the Lord that go before us in our rear guard, they're with us. We have our guardian angels. They're here with us. Open our eyes, Lord, that we will see and hear in ways that we haven't seen before. That's what Holy Spirit's saying to us. His power is limited. We're not. Because we have the unlimited one that we serve. God is saying, get a revelation. Get a revelation of the energized power of Holy Spirit in our lives. I said, Lord, I'm not happy with where I'm at. I want more. He says, you can have it. He said, press into it. You know, but God forbid we go over, God forbid we go over too long in prayer or worship or this is getting a little too long. When we were in Africa, that what were they worshiping? Four hours? I'm like, I'm looking at my wine, like, oh Lord Jesus, how much longer are we gonna keep going here? But you know what? Conviction. <laughs> What's that? We get convicted when we see other people yeah. doing something we're not doing. And I here I'm thinking, oh Lord. You know, and, and it was hot, it was sweaty, there were bugs all over the place, and they were dancing and rejoicing before Jesus because they got solar Bibles. And, I'm, and I thought, Lord, I need to get saved all over again. Because, I, I mean, really, and, and they, were, they, were, they didn't want to stop. And I'm like, aren't you hot? <laughs> you know, come on. You know, but I got so caught up in the natural because, you know, you're uncomfortable, right? And the Lord said, well, you stop it. And so, but, but I'm not saying we have to do that. Hey, you never know. When the glory falls like that, you just keep going on. But I get it. And, and the Lord knows our frame, right? But don't limit him. Press in a little more. You know, the enemy tells you, you can't pray. I can't, you know, without a show of hands, I know there are people that could say that I can't read the Bible. I, I just don't get anything out of it. Try. Don't let the enemy lie to you. You can read. You can read a sports journal. You know, you can, you, hey, let's look at how the football games and the basketball games and, and how they're filled. The stadiums are filled for hours. Look at boring golf. Sorry for all of those who like golf. How many hours, if you have insomnia, watch golf. Just watch it. It'll put you to sleep, you know. It's, oh, my God. But, I mean, look at the hours everybody spends watching that. If we can do that, we can pray. But see, the enemy has this mindset in us that we're, we're, you're not accomplishing anything. This is, you know, like, what are you doing? I mean, this happened to me. There's times like, oh, dear Jesus. You know, like, well, let me shop. <laughs> let me open up this thing, you know? I'm just being honest with you. But then it's like, no, no, Lord. And then you shut everything off. Listen, there was a time, like, think about in the past. They didn't have worship music. They couldn't turn their internet on right? They just had their Bible, and they had to pray, and that's what we did when we first got saved. We didn't have all this stuff to, to entertain us. Sometimes it's just good to turn everything off, and just you and Jesus in your Bible. Sing to the Lord, worship, decree the word, wait upon him. Then it gets to be where you have so much enjoyment out of it that you don't want to miss it. I don't want to miss my time in the morning. I really don't. You know, that's my time, first thing in the morning. I love it, and so... You want to say something? 
Oh, okay. All right. So, <laughs> all right. So now, here we go. Acts I do six. now. <laughs> we can go to the next verse, Acts 16, 16. Everybody okay? All right. I got to. All right, so we know this, and it says here in Acts 16, verse 16, we're going to get free today, all of us. I just have to. It says here, it happened that as we were on our way to the place of prayer, we were met by a slave girl who had a spirit of divination. That is a demonic spirit, that was Python, claiming to foretell the future and discover hidden knowledge. And she brought her owners a good profit by fortune-telling. She followed after Paul and us and kept screaming and shouting, These men are servants of the Most High God, and they are proclaiming to you the way of salvation. And she continued doing this for several days. Then Paul, being greatly annoyed and worn out, because she was trying to distract them of their purpose. They were trying to get the prayer. And she's trying to distract them and talk to them about and babble. Like a lot of times when you're doing deliverance, that spirit wants to talk and talk and talk. I just want to shut up. And so it says here, these men are servants of the Most High God. They're proclaiming to you the way of salvation. She continued doing this for several days. I read that. So then he turned and he said to her, I command you in the name of Jesus Christ as his representative, come out of her right now. And it came out at that very moment. All right? This Paul encountered this girl who was possessed with a spirit of python. That's what divination is. When you look up any information, I was going to look up, I was going to have snakes, I was going to have dance up here, and I thought, oh, Jesus, forget it. <laughs> um, Jensen Franklin, many, many years ago, put out a, a, a video, and we showed it to our youth years ago, about the python spear. You can probably get it online. Oh, it's worth watching. Anyway, but a python snake kills its prey by constriction and asphyxiation. Many times you may feel stagnant or you're backsliding, and the snake tightens itself around a trachea and makes it difficult to breathe. Sometimes you feel like, you know, your breath is taken away. You know, you, you just feel like, oh, all the, the joy, everything's been taken away from you. This prayer-hating python spirit drew attention to Paul and Silas. It tried to distract them from your apostolic mission. Well, they prayed and they worshiped. And they took authority of that spear and they bound it. So when you, a lot of times, well, let me not get ahead of myself. Okay. So sometimes you're feeling stagnant, right? Sometimes you're feeling dry. We're saved a long time. And I've had my moments of, oh, hallelujah, just flowing. And other times, like, am I saved today? Like, <laughs> like, do I know Jesus? Has anybody ever felt that way, right? I mean, you get like, golly. That's not uncommon, but that's the enemy trying to shut us down. And it's like, I'm not praying, you know, like just, and, and you just feel very dry, right? And so that's his agenda, his coiling spirit. He likes to wrap his little slimy self around you in the spirit realm and suck the life out of you, suck your, the breath out of you, lie to you, cut off your life's line to God because he knows you get revelation to take him out. And so he wants to shut you down. That's, it works with a spirit of witchcraft. You might say, well, how is that getting in me? I, I don't know. I just know that it attacks us. So when you're feeling that way, take authority over it. I bind the spirit of python. I bind witchcraft. Because sometimes you don't realize. And you're, you're, st you're in it. And then it's like, wait a minute. I'm trying to pray. I'm trying to worship. But it's so dry. It's stagnant. It's not always the case. But a lot of times... It is, all right? So it wants you to compromise. It wants you to, you know, allow open doors to keep coming, right, so that it can lay its demonic eggs because it wants other critters to come in there too, all right? It wants to attack your finances. It wants you to be offended. It wants you to, to live a stinky life. That's, there's no joy, no abundance in Christ. In Ecclesiastes 10.8, it says, He who digs a pit will fall into it, and whoever breaks through a wall will be bitten by a serpent. Where there's an open door that you allow and you keep allowing it in, it comes in, and it can bite you. All right? So if this spirit is accessed into your life as a, a result of a broken hedge where there's no consecration, then there needs to be a repair. So we want to shut that door, Right? So we know that God has given us the armor of God. And, you know, and so we need to pray. And, and that's why we read the word. That's why we worship. 2 Corinthians 2.11 says, um, To keep Satan from taking advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his schemes. 
All right, so here's where I want to go. So I don't want to be ignorant of the scheme. So we, here are some symptoms, all right? Loss of passion to pray and worship. That's the main one, I'm going to tell you right now. Weariness, hopelessness, perpetual lack, stagnancy, strange accidents all the time. I'm telling you, I've had a lot of these. And, you know, but we learn how to war through it, right? It doesn't mean you're a bad person. It doesn't mean you're evil. It just means you're under attack. And it means that you're going to kick his butt with the blood of Jesus and the word of the Lord. Double personality, like where, you know, it's like the evil twin comes out, you know. Um, <laughs> you know, some respiratory disorders. So, now, again, some. I didn't say, now, if you have a respiratory disorder. But, you know, what's the big deal? You know what gets me? Christians make such a federal case out of, oh, my God, we're talking about demons again. Yeah, guess what? You get oppressed by them. The enemy comes in like a flood, seeking whom he may devour. It's something that is so real, and most of the church denies it. How can a Christian have a demon? You can have anything you want. Your spirit man becomes born again when you're born again, not your soul. We have to get our soul healed. And, not, and please hear my heart. It's not all demons. Most of it is soul, you know, soul uh, healing that we need. But if there is something there, get it out. I don't want it. So, you know, some respiratory disorder, easily hurt or offended. In, uh, what did I write? Accuse you of not being a loving Christian. Uh, oh, that's my own hieroglyphics. Doesn't look at your own behavior, right? Talks about you. Manipulate. This assignment of the enemy would rather you lick your wounds. This is the truth. Constantly talk about it. How many, how long are we going to keep talking about this? What are you doing about it? Right? Lick your wounds, complain, gossip, not forgive, distract, distract you. It wants to keep you in bondage and squeeze the life out of you. I don't know about you. I don't want to lick my wounds, blame everybody else, and, and be distracted where I'm living a life of defeat. What's, let's look at the fruit. Where's the fruit? Has there been improvement? Are you moving forward? What's the fruit? That's when I look at my life. I have to look at me first and say, okay, this is what you're doing wrong. Stop. Or, you know, you're getting to, uh, you know, uh, where your, your focus is off of God. or You know, and the beauty of him is that he loves us so much, he's not mad at us. He's saying, look, I'm, I'm letting you know this stuff to help you. I want you to be the, that, you know, that militant, warring, you know, fire-breathing individual that, you know, that walks in and the atmosphere changes. That's for every one of us. But he limits us, he lies to us, and because of our own soul issues, a lot of times we listen. So God is saying today, that's going. When I know that I come under attack with that, I, you know, I, a lot of times, I, don't, I have to be honest with you, I don't really even think of it right away. I'll just think, what in the world? Or just think it's me having a bad day. And then when it's continuing, it's like, wait a minute now. Lord, I just take authority over this thing in Jesus' name. Lord, it doesn't mean it's in you. You know, all I know is that it works. I've been doing this a very long time. Take authority over, plead the blood. And I'm reading the Bible no matter what. You're not going to stop me. I'm reading it because I have a brain. I have the mind of Christ. Therefore, I can comprehend what I'm reading. Don't lie to me and say that I can't understand the Bible. I can understand it. Get a version that works for you. But you can hear and you can read. You can read the newspaper. You can read your, if you're on your job, the manual that's telling you what to do. That, don't listen to that lie that you can't understand the Bible. Sorry. All right, so anyway, so God wants us free. So I want us to just, we're going to pray about if any of us are feeling stagnant, if any of us have been hindered in our prayer life. You say, but you don't know what I'm going to. I'm having problems at home. I get all that. And you know what? And the Lord knows that. And I'm not minimizing that. I really am not. But I want you to know that he's on our side. The Bible says, if God be for us, who can be against us? He's on our side, working with us to help us. So I'm going to ask you to stand. Psalm 32 says, God can surround us with songs of deliverance. Psalm 129.4 says, but the Lord is righteous. He has cut me free from the cords of the wicked. We are not running from the devil. We are not in that place of defense. We're on the offensive and the enemy runs from us. He just doesn't want us getting a revelation of who we are. Amen. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. We have that spirit in us. We have the spirit of the living God in us. Amen. So I'm going to just pray. Well, actually, you know what? If you want more, if you want to accept that challenge, like God is commissioning us. He's saying, 
How many of you want to be that militant prayer warrior? I'm up there. I really am. Come forward. Just come forward. We're going to pray. Because God is commissioning the church at large, all of us, to be people of prayer who know their God, that we're seeing great exploits. I want it. I'm like, my, my, my heart is like flint. I mean, I'm my, it, like a laser beam before God. I'm like, God, I don't want to stay where I'm at. I'm not happy with where I'm at. I'm dissatisfied with where I'm at. Not because I'm, I'm failing or anything. I, I know God has more. I want it. And so God wants to, to visit all of us in a greater way, right? So I'm going to just pray. So I did write something out, but we'll see how I go do this. So, Lord, we just worship you. And, we, Lord, you see each and every one that's up here. You see all of us here that are crying out to you that we want more. And, Lord, you're, you want to bring us into, you said to, this is what the Lord said to me. And he said, it, he said it a while ago. He says, I'm bringing people into a dimension of prayer that you've never experienced yet. Well, I want it. And so, Holy Spirit, we thank you that you're releasing your travailing anointing upon your people. We thank you, Holy Spirit, that you've given eyes to see. You've given us ears to hear. Lord, you've given us a heart that knows you, that our heart is in synchronization with you, that our heart be beats with your heart, oh God. Lord, our, Lord, forgive us where we've been stagnant where we felt dry, where we felt our breath taken away from us, where we have felt like we're, we're not walking in victory. God, we repent. And, Lord, I do take authority over a spirit of python. I break that assignment of the enemy off of us, where the enemy tries to just shut us down. I bind that spirit of witchcraft. I bind that spirit of python. I bind you and render you ineffective and powerless. And I loose freedom. I loose the spirit of the living God in Jesus' name. Father, we just pray, Father, that you've called us to be people of prayer. You've called us. You said, my house shall be a house of prayer for all nations. Lord, we are that. Lord, you've called us to stand and to believe that you will give us the nations for our inheritance, oh God. Ethos, our, our family, our neighborhood, our regions, oh God. God, we say remove the scales off our eyes. Forgive us where we have believed the lie at times of the enemy that says that we are not making headway, that we are not making break breakthrough, that we're not seeing change. Well, Lord, we just thank you for your mighty prevailing prayer that you are raising us up as fire torches and fire brands for your kingdom that father you're calling us and commissioning us this day to be the militant prayer warriors that hear their god and do great exploits oh god ho oh, that's for all of us lord the spirit of the Lord God says he is renovating he's renovating our spirit man today he's setting us see in ways that we have not seen before he's allowing our hearts to rise up and he's breaking scar tissue off the Lord says, the Lord says, watch and see what I will do as you take that time, as you press into me. And Lord, I repent and I, for, and we pray here where we have a religious mindset. God, forgive us for being religious where we got so caught up in the letter of the law, not in the spirit. God, we just thank you that you're causing the rivers of living water to flow, to flow in ways, the rivers, the rivers of healing, the rivers of deliverance, the rivers of prayer, of travailing, wailing prayer, where we are crying out to God, just like you did with Reese Howells, just like you did in Argentina, and revival took the nation. You are calling your people to travail and rise up in prayer. And we say, yes, oh God. We say, yes, oh God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I just wanted to share a picture. Keep on praying in the spirit. Keep on praying in the spirit. I want you to stamp your right foot down on the ground, okay? Let's just do a prophetic act. Because what I saw was like a trap door underneath the fear in your life. It's not under you, it's underneath the fear that's in your life. And as you put your foot down, that trap door is opening and the fear is being sucked out. 
It's like that sound you hear on an airplane when you flush the toilet on the airplane. It's, there's a little pause and it goes. <laughs> and that's what I saw because fear is binding people right now. We were traumatized by COVID. We don't even fully realize how much of an effect that has had on us. I'm not, I'm not shaming anybody, but I'm just saying, put your foot down and say, no more devil, you're going. Fear is going. Fear is not from God. Fear is a spirit. And he gave us authority over the spirit of fear, power and love and a sound mind. Lord, I thank you that fear is leaving your people right now and you take authority by stamping your foot down and listen to that thing oh, yeah, go, that and it's got to, to go, and be replaced by the peace of God. I speak that over all of you here, that, that so peace that is the governor of your heart. Peace is the governor of your spirit right now. You're not going to be bound by worry and all the what-if scenarios. No, God comes through for the people who love him. I will be obedient to what he tells me to do, and I will not dwell on the lies of Satan. In Jesus' name. Now, I just saw a picture. I saw people laying hands on people that were on their deathbed and then being raised up. Put your hands up. Lord, I thank you for resurrection life. I thank you for the power of God on all of our lives. You said just believe that you're that a resurrection life. I just saw it so vividly of people that you're praying for that we speak resurrection life over. We speak... Lay your hands on Leah, uh, uh, Linnell and, and Taika. Lay your hands. Resurrection life in Jesus' name. We speak resurrection life in Jesus' name. That's for all of us. Go out. Lay hands on people. Go out and pray. Go out and pray and believe God for that break or anointing. Come on. You all can turn around and just pray for people right now. Because, Lord, we just lose that breaker. We lose that breaker and Come on, pray in the Jesus spirit. Name. Pray in the spirit. God will open your eyes. In the name of Jesus. Show us, Lord. We lose that breaker more anointing. for us. We lose that there are more for anointing. us than there are against us. He's called the captain of the hosts of heaven. He's called the captain of the heavenly armies. Thank you, Lord, for releasing your angelic protection. Just pray that the Lord will open your eyes. Like Elijah's servant. Open his eyes, Lord, that he may see that there are more for us than there are against us. We overcome by the blood of the Lamb, by the word of our testimony. But, and we will not love our lives, even unto death, Lord. We surrender that fear, because we know fear is not our future. You are the Prince of Peace. We make room for you in our hearts today, Lord. Open my eyes. Open my eyes. Reveal the enemy's tactics against me. You said that we are more than conquerors. Speak it over yourself. I am more than a conqueror. I am more than a conqueror. He always leads me in triumph. Jesus always leads me in triumph. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Victory belongs to you. Today. <laughs> 